can't wait to go over today's topic, which is the serious side effects of antihistamines. Now, many people have dealt with allergies or hives or skin rashes, asthma, or many other conditions as to why they may have been put on an antihistamine. Now, I will say that using an antihistamine every once in a while isn't probably going to cause any serious side effects, but what you do want to be aware of chronic medication use and the serious side effects that come in time. If you're not aware of what antihistamines are, let's talk about histamines first in general. Histamines is a perfect example of the rain barrel effect. So the rain barrel is always that things build up inside of your body and over time your body can't create a state of equilibrium anymore. It's compensated too much. The rain barrel overflows and then you get all the symptoms of disease. This happened, it used to happen to me. I had year round allergies, but they were controllable for the most part. I was actually on Benadryl every single evening and then Sudafed or Zyrtec or singular during the day. Now, this is a horrible way to live. Basically, I had to put myself to sleep at night using Benadryl and wake myself back up every morning with Sudafed. Terrible. Nobody should do that. But anyway, that's what my allergist gave me for medication. I was a teenager. I didn't know any better. And that's what I did. Now, here's the issue. Histamines are a real thing. When you encounter allergens in the environment, whether it's dust, grass, mold, pollen, dogs, cats, etc., those proteins, right, from the allergen actually bind to the IgE receptor on a cell, on a mast cell, and when that happens, the body then granulates it. Basically, the mast cells now produce these histamines. When the histamines build up, what do we get? Itchy eyes, runny nose, constriction of the airway, maybe with asthma, uh, itchy, itchy everything, right? Hives, all of that. So what I had is year-round allergies, but then when spring used to hit, and the trees just used to bud. You could barely see them bud. There wasn't even all that pollen yet. My allergies would be debilitating. I used to have to take weeks off from work, believe it or not. Like, this is a true story. Luckily, I worked for myself, but still, it was not a good place to be. My eyes used to swell shut, and there was nothing I could do. And Boston was horrible for this with all the oak trees. Yes, it looked beautiful, uh, and it was one of my favorite seasons when it started to warm up after a cold, raw, snowy winter. Uh, but I was, I was in much pain, much suffering, much agony. My eyes used to just literally be bloodshot and like glass all cracked. It was horrible. And no amount of Benadryl could even touch it because there was just such a large amount of all these histamines and leukotriene-based reactions. So what did I need to do? Well, the truth is I needed to empty that rain barrel all year round so that I wouldn't then overflow that rain barrel in the spring. And that's exactly what I did. Now, again, I'm not going to go into how I healed, but I, I healed gut-based issues, H. pylori, SIBO, uh, and candida overgrowth in the gut. I also said have had some heavy metals and a whole lot of stress and poor sleep. So it wasn't one thing, but I fixed that, re, uh, repopulated, healed my gut. Uh, and then every now in, in the springtime, I can kind of feel that little tinge, of, like even all the pollen blowing around and I'm totally fine. I'm like, oh yeah, I'm like, there it is. The rain barrel is starting to get a little higher, but I'm okay. It's in my genetics. I have mastocytosis, a mast cell activation syndrome, but it no longer affects me. Still in my genetics, but that rain barrel has now been emptied. So that's really, really helpful. But what if you were the former me as a teenager taking Benadryl or not just Benadryl, you know, like I said, Zyrtec or um, what else is there? Allegra, Claritin, um, and, and the, or the active ingredients inside of Benadryl, which is just the uh, diphenhydramine of the, of the active ingredients. So really important. If you're taking an allergy or asthma or any of these things, even some of the uh, acid blockers can actually be antihistamines. Okay. So now why does this matter? What are the serious side effects? I know that's why you came, but I don't like to just rattle them off. You can just look online and get all that. What I always want to do is give you context, right? You need context for why any of this matters. Well, here's the issue. And when you take antihistamines, um, certainly some of the older ones, right? Uh, like the Benadryls, et cetera, definitely more harsh. What they can do is they can pass the blood brain barrier. Why is that dangerous? Well, they can start to interfere with the acetylcholine receptors inside of the brain. And why does that matter? If you block 
the receptors for acetylcholine, which is a neurotransmitter responsible for muscle contraction and blood vessel dilation. It can actually increase your chances and risk for dementia as you get older. So remember, there is no one cause for any of these things. There's, it's a multifactorial filling up of the rain barrel for things like dementia, Alzheimer's, et cetera. But what are some of the things that you can see along the way as to what your rain barrel may be overflowing, right, from use of these antihistamines. The first one is um, sleepiness or feeling sedated. Now, I actually used to use Benadryl for that exact reason. I was an insomniac, so I had to pop two Benadryl at like 9 p.m. or 10 p.m. at night whenever I was going to bed in order to fall asleep. It acted as a natural sedative, and that's when I did it. Now, I took more of the epinephrine-based version, the pseudoephedrine with the pseudofed, in order to then wake up the grogginess in the morning. Again, a horrible way to live, but that's what I did. I didn't know any better as a teenager. The second is that since you're producing, you're pushing your body more towards a fight-or-flight state, you're gonna get two more symptoms, which are dry eyes and dry mouth. So if you're currently experiencing dry eyes and dry mouth, don't blame it on these autoimmune and genetic issues that a lot of your doctors may say it is. Look at, are you taking a medication where this can be one of the side effects? Because as you're being pushed to more of the fight or flight, and you're blocking these acetylcholine receptors that help to produce tears in the eyes, right? And mucus, it could be from the medication. All right, another one is affects the, um, your, your bowels and your uh, bladder as well. And this is constipation and urinary retention. What does this mean? This is, this is actually really important. So it can slow down the peristaltic movement because again, it affects the neurotransmitters, one of those being acetylcholine. The second with bladder retention, this is important. And that's because it is difficult to fully empty your bladder for some people, not all, this doesn't affect everybody, when you're using an antihistamine type product. And so that means that maybe you're emptying 80% of the bladder, so you're retaining some of that fluid there, which can make it feel like you always have to urinate, or you have more of what's called a, uh, what's the conventional medicine name that they love to give? They love to give names like irritable bowel syndrome, right? What's the other one? Irritable, I think it's like irritable bladder syndrome. It's something that's very similar to that. You can look that up. You can fact check that on Google if you'd like, but it's something like irritable bladder. And um, it's just like, wow, they have irritable bowel, now they have irritable bladder. Okay, yes, but what's the root cause? Well, the root cause can legitimately be these medication side effects. All right, just like you can get the dry skin and the dry mouth, you can also, sorry, but just like you can get the dry mouth, right, and the dry eyes, you can also get dry skin. And the dry skin is a common cause that happens from taking antihistamines because it has an overall drying effect on essentially the mucosa of the body. And so that affects, can affect the hair. My hair used to be super dry when I was on antihistamines. I don't remember the dry eyes uh, per se. I do remember the dry mouth um, and I do remember the dry skin. That's for sure. I didn't necessarily have the constipation or the urinary retention. I was young. I was a teenager, um, but certainly I had all these dry based issues. Uh, the next one is that you start to, you start to build up a tolerance of these antihistamines, which is never a good sign. So then you need to start to use more and more to get the same effect. That's why for me, even though I was young, I started off as just the 125 milligram. I had to quickly go in like six months from them to then to 50 milligrams. And then during allergy season in April, late April or so, I could take, and you should not do this. I'm not giving this as medication uh, recommendations at all. I used to take two Benadryl every two to three hours. I would take over a dozen Benadryl a day and it still didn't have an effect that I was able to still work and go out into the outside world. It was horrible. My body began to build up a tolerance and the histamines just continued to surge inside of my body. So terrible, be careful of building up a, a um, tolerance to all of these things. And then this, this next one, uh, 
very much affects women, not as much men in the same way, but vaginal dryness. So oftentimes, if I'm working with a female in my practice and she brings up uh, vaginal dryness, I often ask, are you on a antihistamine or medication that may have a drying-based effect? Now, for men, it doesn't happen often, and this often isn't as reported in the literature. I don't think men talk about it necessarily as much. Um, there seems to be potentially issues with uh, erectile dysfunction or, or maybe even impotence. And I believe, I can't prove this, I believe it has more to do with that fight or flight based function, especially when taking more of the allergy medications. I actually, I can't name the names because that'll probably get me in trouble. Um, but the ones that push more uh, epinephrine inside of the body, that fight or flight. Because when you're in fight or flight, you're not in the rest and relax, rest and digest, blood flow is not as good, you're not as calm. And so it's one thing to take into consideration. So those are the major side effects uh, that I've researched, that I've seen inside of my own practice. If any of them are happen happening to you, I recommend this because your conventional medicine doctor won't most likely be able to find an alternative, although I do recommend asking at least in the short term, but look to find out what your underlying root causes are. Mine were gut issues. Yours might be other, but if you can run the big five labs or even if you can just run the starter kit, that's really what I'm recommending for most people. Um, you can find that at stephencabral.com slash starter dash kit. It's a great place to start. Look at your mineral levels, look at your vitamin levels, look at your gut health, look at your heavy metals. I wish I I had that as a teenager. I didn't. I'm just trying to pay it forward and share that to you now. Uh, again, you can work. You can run this through an integrative health practitioner. You can run this through a, a good uh, naturopathic doctor in your local area, whatever works with for you, or you can run it through us. Uh, or again, you can look for other alternatives. My job is just to bring you not only the issues that you might be finding, but the action plan as to how you can get to the root cause and heal your body once and for all. Thanks everybody for tuning into today's show. As I always say, if it was helpful, just share it with a friend, get this information out in the world. We thank you. We appreciate you. And I'll be back tomorrow with a brand new Cabral concept. Thanks so much for tuning into today's show. Before you go, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I want to make sure that you're getting our daily content, not missing out on anything. Functional medicine, wellness, weight gain, weight loss, anti-aging, living longer, stronger, and all of the most cutting edge research. And if there's any topics you want to hear, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Take care.